All right, if you're just joining us on the live stream, we're going to start about a minute late because we're just having one or two connectivity issues. So we'll start in a moment. It's a way of saying David's, David's frozen. Yeah. Are you back, David? Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, absolutely. Hang on. I'm just going to set the security right and then I'll get everybody in because we're ready. It's, it's, we're a minute late. Right. We're ready to rock. Yep. Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Teaching Live. Uh, sorry, we're a, a couple of minutes late this morning. We were just having a, one or two connectivity issues, getting people joined. Uh, still one or two waiting to join. So we'll just have a little moment while we wait for one or two classes to join. Um, while we're waiting, um, I, we were, Pi and I were just talking about Noah at Moorlands. Uh, well done, Noah. Uh, we were really impressed with your running every day to raise money for school. So that was uh, great to read. And uh, thank you to, I think it was Mr. Phillips, is it, Pi, that uh, um, drew, drew our attention to that? Yes, I know him as Tom. Ah, yes, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Uh, Phillips, yes. So excellent work, Noah. Um, I once run a marathon, um, John. Did you really? Yeah, over the South Downs. Uh, I must have been about... 19 because i know you do a lot of running but when i looked at what nara had done i thought that's that's a terrific effort and um the other thing of course is he's raised some money for the schools so yeah absolutely great work david you're looking a bit pale this morning i'm worried well there's a there's a bit of a a flu bug going around here i've got a child off school upstairs um yeah but it was i think i think it sparked off with me making too much noise on saturday afternoon pie Right, what were you um, doing? Because, well, you know, you know, uh, I'm a big Leeds United fan. Yes. John's a big Southampton uh, fan. Yes, we all have our little things to bear. That's right. Well, it, Leeds played Southampton on Saturday. Oh, what happened? Well, I'll just say I'm the one that's smiling this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh. John's, uh, I think he's in denial. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have some literacy uh, to be getting on with. Um, so, uh, what's the game this morning, Pi? Well, just before we do that, I've um, <laughs> sent an, I've sent an email to um, Bolton Parish and to Forest Academy because uh, uh, a few poems I want to use in something by the children, so if the teachers could double check their emails. And if you can't find the email from me, then do get in touch with John or David. Uh, or indeed myself through Twitter. Okay, so <laughs> excuse me, oh, that's a, you're both Sorry. in. Now, um, what we're going to do is make up a suspense paragraph, and in the notes, the teaching notes, and hopefully everybody can see that uh, on the screen or in your books or however you do it. I've written out eight different starters, and the idea is we're going to make up a suspense paragraph. Um, so, partner A uh, does the ones in red. And partner B is doing the ones in blue. So do you want to be A or, or B, um, David? I'll start with A to start with you. OK, so you've got you start with hardly daring to breathe. I mean, you give us your main character, um, Bilbo Baggins, and get them doing something. And then I'm going to come in with at that moment he or she saw ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, uh, and we bounce it backwards and forwards using those starters that I've given. So this is about practising um different ways of starting sentences so off you go david okay hardly daring to breathe colin emerged from the forest petrified that the dog chasing him would catch him at that moment he saw not one 
but two bright eyes uh, moving rapidly towards him. Horrified, he picked up his magic stick and threw it in the direction of one of the pairs of eyes. Now, uh, I just wanted to say where you get the horrified, petrified, you can change the word there. The idea is you start with an ED word, so it could be scared or whatever you want. Same with the LY ones that I'm on now. and the, um, So I can do any adverb that I want. Um, desperately, Colin um, turned on his heels and began to run towards uh, the city gate. Shaking, could I say shaking violently? Yep. Okay, shaking violently, the ground opened up in front of him. Um, now, I've got outside, inside, but of course I can do any prepositional starter. Um, so I think now you've got the ground opening up in front of him. I'm going to say... Um, Below, he could just make out um, an underground um, tunnel. Um, and without thinking, he leapt in. Now, again, you can do any preposition. Above. Yes. He felt immense heat bearing down on his head something something ominous um was waiting for him at the top of the tunnel ding, 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 ding. so again you can vary obviously uh, some of them you don't vary but the ed the adverbs uh the ly ones uh, the ing starters and then the two prepositions you can vary and david got a nice contrast after two minutes um so you might get time to do two paragraphs after two minutes swap over so you've got to think about a bit about the context if you're if you're start do the one starting so you've got to have a character maybe in a setting um so i'll start it off so i'm doing the red ones david you're now on blue hardly daring to breathe now you had colin so I'm going to have um, I'm going to have a girl. I'm going to have um, Joe. Hardly daring to breathe, um, Joe um, tiptoed through the ancient ruins. At that moment, she heard a crack of thunder bellow through the dark sky frightened she froze mm, i'm trying to think of something else rather than silently or quietly i'm going to go with um gently okay gently she took one tiny step backwards. Now, shaking, uh, is it shaking? I might go for something slightly different there, another ing one. Um, hoping uh, that, that the lightning would not strike her she made her way into a, a ruined square where um, statues still stood um, bathed in moonlight. Now, could I do here, Pi, could I do here um, a preposition um, to her left? Yes. Because then that sets you up for something. Yeah, to her right. <laughs> so to her left, 
she noticed a gold coin spinning on a marble tabletop. To her right, a huge goblin appeared and its yellow eyes were staring intently, mesmer mesmerized, mesmerized, mesmerized by the spinning coin. Something was, so something was, something was rattling beneath her feet. Okay, so um, it takes some thought, as you can see, John. It's not straightforward, but what we're doing is practicing, varying the openings of the sentences, trying to build up um, a, a paragraph. And of course, it's all got to hang together. That's the difficult bit. And you don't know what your partner's going to say, but he's got to flow as if it was a pa paragraph that is written down. We can't hear you, John. We still can't hear you. Sorry, I, I muted myself because of my coughing fit. Apologies for that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that list on the screen when I start this time no to help people uh, with the order. So um, if I just quickly pull it up again. Um, so where you've got the ED endings, the LY and the ING, and indeed the prepositions, you can change those to your own LY endings, your own ED endings, your own ING, your own Eddingleys. So um, I'll set the timer up. Uh, four minutes on the clock, making your suspense paragraphs in pairs. I'll, I'll uh, just give you an, the nod at two minutes to swap over. So off we go. Okay, that's time to swap over. So if you when you get to the end of the paragraph, swap your role. So you're doing the reds or the blues, whichever one you did didn't do last time.
So that's your time up. So we need to go straight to today's session page and crack on because we started a little bit late this morning. So we're going to go straight into the Padlet activity. Well, building, <laughs> yeah, John, building on that, uh, the idea of um, building up some suspense in the writing, um, we, what we've got here is... Um, an extract from my story, and then some analysis of it. In other words, we're thinking about what the sentences are doing, what their job is, and then an innovation on the right-hand side. So let's have a, a, a bit of a look at it bit by bit. At that moment, so what we've got there is a fairly dramatic opener, which sort of um, kickstarts something exciting so words uh, phrases like at that moment in an instant out of the blue without warning suddenly those are quite good to get things going so we got at that moment comma somebody entered the warehouse so you've got your setting and for suspense you need a slightly dodgy setting um and we've got an empty word there somebody and the point of the empty word is you're not giving away whatever it is somebody something it a shadow a silhouette, a vague outline, you're hiding what it is, because we've often talked about don't give it away, hide it. It, it, it. it won't work if you say, at that moment, a dirty great monster appeared. It just doesn't, <laughs> it gives it away too quickly. So you've got to get the imagination of the reader working. Um, and uh, then I've gone for, there was a pause, a sense of someone listening. So again, we've got empty words, someone. And we've got some quiet, what's going on. And, and, and in stories, whenever it's quiet, you know, in a moment, there's going to be a dirty, great noise or something's going to happen. So we're building up the tension here. Um, torch beams. So we've got a light on now in the darkness of the warehouse. Slice the darkness. Footsteps echoed. So I'm not giving away who it is, but we know there are torch beams. There are footsteps. And then the guards began to search. So these are the guards from the checkpoint. Uh, who are searching uh, through this warehouse where our main character is. And what you'll notice in that one, John, is I've used some semicolons. I could have done full stops, um, but one thing leads to another, which leads to another. So they're fairly closely related, those sentences. So I've joined them with semicolons. Risking a glance of as our ing starter, so our main character is having a little bit of a look, Joe saw empty shadows, ebony shadows, sorry, could have been empty shadows. So again, it's that um, idea of the empty words, not giving too much away. Ebony shadows shifting. So that's what she saw. And then what did she feel? And felt a sharp wintry wind seep through the open door. So it's a bit cold. And cold is also often, you know, you've got a character shivering, but it's not just from the cold. Then I got uh, another ring starter, shuddering, comma, he cuddled into the warmth of the wolf's fur. So um, I've got my main character cuddling up to um, the mythical beast that, he, that um, uh, he's with. And that's the reaction of the main character to the shadows moving and the wintry wind. And then I'm going to reveal my main character's thoughts to end the paragraph. They could wait this out and would move on once the guards had gone. So you're going to hide and wait for the guards to go. So if you look at my uh, innovation, at that moment, somebody entered the warehouse, I've got, without warning, the window creaked and someone slipped into the abandoned house. Then there was a pause, a sense of someone listening. I've got <laughs> some, silence seemed to hold its breath. Nothing moved. And again, I've got that semicolon to join the two together. Then we've got the torch beams and the footsteps and the guards. It says, our eye light flickered on. That should read, a light flickered on. So, And I read it so many times, and I know that will amuse you, John, but there we are. A light flickered on. Whoever had entered began to move. Someone shifted furniture and began to search. I've got two begans in there that I'm a bit worried about. Then we've got risking a glance so our main character is looking around so i've got sally glanced around from her hiding place and then three things that she sees dust shimmered footsteps echoed 
a distant tap dripped and they're all related so i've piled them up there with the semicolons which you use remember when you've got two sentences very closely related and then my main character's reaction she ducked back down heart thudding the owl blinked so in that one instead of a wolf or a tiger i've got an owl a huge owl and i've gone heart thudding so her heart is thudding the owl is blinking and the two things are related so i've joined them with that semicolon they could escape later once the intruder had left and again they could escape later once the intruder had left so i've got two things closely related so i've gone for a semicolon could have been a full stop can't Can be I, a comma a though, question but... there pi because yeah. that semicolon the second part is not a sentence it's is it so should it be a semicolon there I shall have to get back to you on that. It should be a main clause. You're absolutely right. Once the intruder had left, da 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 da, da it's the subordinate yeah. clause. It's the subordinate clause. So you can't. Yes, I can't do it. You've caught me out. <laughs> so, so that could be a comma, in fact. Yes, it could. You're absolutely the main clause there is they could escape yeah. later. In fact, you're right. It should be a comma. Yes. You've caught Thank me you. out. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you're absolutely right, John. The main clause is they could escape later. The subordinate clause is once the intruder had left, so it's got to be a comma. Yes. So, tricky stuff, John. Just, with, with it the, is, it is. And, and yeah. it, you know, it, it's kind of pleasing that when when uh, when you get things wrong, Pi, because because you are the expert in these matters. So, it's, so it just, just proves, to, proves that, that grammar is it's and 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 writing is such a high level skill it um, is that uh, that you know w that w when we're teaching it you you we're making great demands on people we are so, so let's go to the padlet well i think because of that john it's important that when you write your sentences before you post them you reread and double check yes because it's so easy to make a mistake and as you say you know i've written and edited over 250 books but, uh, you know, I still make, make mistakes um, because it is complex. There's a lot going on there. The main <laughs> thing, I think, John, is to make sure you're writing some sentences that make sense and are building up the suspense and the tension. Mm -hmm. So start with that and then go for the tweaking. Now, obviously, don't write everything. Do it in bits. Write sentences, then post them up or a couple of sentences then post them up. Now, David, there's a lot going on, isn't there? There is. <clears throat> there is, yes. Um, what's quite nice as well is when I put, I'm going to post something up now. Um, some of the children help me by screen grabbing some of the resources and putting them on. So if you do go to the Padlet, you'll be able to see that somebody has very kindly put the grid on the, on the Padlet for me, like I used to do. So that's quite nice that they're helping uh, with that. Um, but yeah, well, if I if I start approving some now, uh, you'll see some either sentences or some extended pieces of writing uh, coming through. Yeah, straight away, Lily from Ludden. Thanks, Lily. Without warning, the door was flung open, and the entire some strangers had stepped in. So there's a little bit you need tweaking there. Silence filled the room. Not a breath was took. I think it should be not a breath was taken. A torch was shined. <clears throat> a torch shone. Might be a bit tighter, Lily. Um, whoever had entered began to move. <coughs> they were searching for something, someone. I like that uh, use of the semicolon, and I'm liking something, someone. Dun, 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 dun. So that, that's a little bit of tweaking needed, but you're, you're um, on it. Yep, Kieran from St. Patrick's. Suddenly the door swung open. Um, and a figure marched into the abandoned greenhouse. Perfect. Well done, Kieran. Olive didn't, doesn't say which school you're from. At that moment, you need a comma there, Olive. Someone, and someone is a, is a single word. Um, it's not two separate words. Someone entered the palace. The guards searching for the intruder. 
that could I mean that works uh, it was the guards or um the guard searching for the intruder that, that's good don't forget to post your school Luke from Clun, 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 without Clun. warning. You need a comma there, Luke. The building shuddered and soldiers flooded in. I like that. The building shuddered. I like the um, the choice of word there, Pi, for flooded. Yes. Paints that picture, doesn't it, of how they are coming in. Uh, Louisa and Lu Lucy from St. Patrick's. At that moment, a window opened and the floor creaked. Lyle could see someone enter the shed from the corner of his eye, but he didn't dare move. Finley at St. Patrick's, everything went silent as if noise itself held its breath. So slightly tweaked my idea there. Nicely done. Oh, that was a good one. Um, where was it? Uh, Grace and Tilly from uh, MJS. At that moment, the streetlights suddenly illuminated the shadows surrounding Tracy. Yeah. I like that one. Daniel from TGS. There was a growl and a scratch. I like that. The sort of short, tight, punchy sentence, but it's ominous. Floorboards creaked. Uh, there's a bit there that doesn't work, Daniel. She felt someone watching her. Then she saw some, now you need a full stop after her. Then she saw some bright orange eyes like the sun burning. So a little bit of tweaking needed there, but you're really on it. Well done. Robert from Forest Academy in shock, he saw two ruby red eyes in the darkness. Just have a look at the spelling of eyes, Robert, but nicely done. Olivia from Rolvenden. There's a full stop missing, Olivia. There was a shock. The door opened without a touch. In fact, there are two full stops missing. Having said that, I like the short, tight, punchy sentences. And John and Lily at Fisherton. Nicole from Forest. At that moment, a shadow flashed around the corner, which made Ahmet fall in fear. There was a long pause until a sound of glass breaking appears appeared. Footsteps echoed. Yeah. I like that really short sentence there. Footsteps echoed. Footsteps is one word, by the way, uh, Nicole. It's interesting, isn't it? The... the... If you have a long sentence, it's a really good idea to follow it by a short, tight, punchy one. And that really helps the drama. And it's funny because in school, very often people feel obliged or get encouraged to write longer sentences. But of course, the short ones can work really well for suspense. OK, we're going to come out of the Padlet. I'm going to move swiftly on. Um, because lot we, of good work there, uh, John, a lot of good work there. And that could be nicely followed up. Practicing your paragraph um, before you write the whole thing. Now, but it's, it, it's really highlighting the need to reread before you post. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, because, we've all got to do that. <laughs> um, I just have a quick look at the gallery. Let's see if there's anything. I don't think there's been anything. I think. Um, I think we oh. nobody's post they were they weren't taken by your your uh, idea last week pi no i th <laughs> I, I, i'm gonna say ha half term intruded uh yes probably so well, got, what's, what's the um well i got another great one you see i think i'm very excited if you press on there and it's a little bit faint but can you see the very first one that one yes. there yeah uh, what i wanted to show was uh OK, I'll tell you exactly what I did. About two thirds up the page, I drew horizon across, one line across. And then trying to get a bit of perspective, I drew those rectangles for, for 
um, to represent sort of gardens or fields, okay? Then I've got a lollipop on the left-hand side for a tree, and then I've got some houses, and then I've got a couple more lollipops and the sun. So that's the first thing I did. Now, if you move across to the next one, I then got a, a, um, one of those fine um, uh, pens, and I started to fill in the fields, and then I went on. So I, basically, all the big bits, I there you can see it there very nicely. Um, and then I started to paint. So the first thing I did was to paint the big bits, which is the blue background. And that was that took a bit of time to very carefully. If you go to the right now, John, you can see how I've gone round everything. Uh, but I also put some bits in in black, like the rooftops and bits of the trees, some of the fields as well. So very carefully building it up, remembering don't put one wet colour by another. And then I had a bit of fun. Uh, and this was the bit where I really had to watch it. So um, where I filled in the orange on the left hand side, I then went to the red and then across to a green and then across to a green. And by the time I got to the green on the right hand side, I could go back and put the green in the left hand side, if you see what I mean. So you've always got to wait for it to dry and then gradually bit by bit filling the rest of it in um, and having a little bit of fun with some patterning. Um, etc. So building it up over time, and you've got a nice city there, uh, city view or, or town view, which is meant to be the place where um, the adventure um, actually happens. Yeah. Uh, John, if you just go back to the Padlet and refresh, there are a few late editions. Uh, okay, to the Padlet. Okay, yeah. I will do that. So that, that's, I, I like that. It's very effective. It, it's it, it's easy to do, funnily enough, uh, as long as you take your time over it. Yes, yes, absolutely. No, it's very effective. Um, OK, I'll just have a quick look at the gallery again then. Oh, oh yes, here we go. Uh -huh, I like that one from Forest. Mia from Forest. Oh, look at the buildings, yes. Yeah, very good. And, oh, this one... Uh, Lucia from St. Patrick's. That's 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 good. So there's what well, we've got some colour background. I like yeah. the way you it goes dark to light there to the yellow. That's, that's then clever. Completely in black, an outline. Um, yeah, that's worked really nicely, hasn't it? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so some some stuff in the gallery there to look at. Um, and we'll go on to the live writing jotcast. We've got some audio, John. Oh, no, yeah. That uh, Have I done things in the wrong order this morning? We'll, well do the audio I'll... after the Jotcast. All right, no worries. Yes, no, yeah, normally we go to the audio before we do the... Oh, never mind. <laughs> now, your point, John, I mean, my point was you can use a semicolon to show that two sentences are closely related. So the rain poured, the wind howled, Lightning crackled overhead. Um, so I've got three short, tight, punchy sentences for drama, building up um, that sense of sort of wild storm. But each one needs to be a main clause. In other words, each one needs to stand on its own as a sentence. So that one is right. Joe picked up his sword. Joanna grabbed her bow and arrows. So I've got Joe doing one thing, Joanna doing another. They're closely related. They get themselves ready to do something. And I've shown their close relation with that semicolon. Could have been a full stop. Joe woke with a start, a start. The wolf slept on. So Joe's waking. The wolf is sleeping on. One thing to notice, John, is after the semicolon, it's a small letter. Unless you've got the name of somebody like Joanna. The room was cold. Snow fell outside. Joe and the wolf dozed. The guards approached the warehouse. So they're sleeping. The guards are coming forwards. Joe munched on the carrot. The wolf chewed a bone. Outside, the guards stood to attention. Inside, Joe shrunk beneath a wooden crate. So I think I've nailed all of those, John. I the think you have, fight. Yeah, they're nicely related together. One thing's happening here and there's another thing happening and they're related. And I've got that semicolon right. 
I've got the capital letter full stop. Needs a bit of thought here, but copy the basic idea of some of mine. So I have two characters, for instance, like Joe and Joanna, one doing one thing and the other doing another. And they're both doing it at the same time. It's closely related. Use a semicolon. And reread before you post. Yeah. Quite sophisticated, John. It is. I'll have a go at one. <clears throat> so that's a quick look. I'll pick um, the sentence of three. Ooh. So he's gone for lightning, something or other. Flashed. He's going to do a thunder one, I reckon. <laughs> thunder something or other. Thunder rumble dimly in the distance. So each one needs to be potentially a sentence, but he's showing a relationship with his semicolon, linking them a little bit closely. Now he's got a character called Jeff, so it's capital letter. Jeff shuddered. That's the reaction of a character to those two things happening. Jeff shuddered, pulling his coat about him. You could put in a comma there, Je um, John. Jeff shuddered, pulling his coat about him. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's nailed it. And I like what Martha's done there, John. Suddenly. The ground rumbled. Joe thought it was an earthquake. Absolutely spot on. Yep, the two are related, so it's quite obvious you can use a semicolon if you want to. Uh, Mia and Gerard from St. Patrick's. Jamal and the lioness lay still. Citizens approached the building. Yep, good. Yep. Good day. Name. I like that name, Jamal. Yes. Uh, Taylor from Forest. The hail hammered down, the wind screamed, thunder growled overhead. Yeah, short, tight punch, it's all related. Yeah. Monica munched on a cupcake. The main coon chewed on a mouse. That's Kari from St. Patrick's. Well done. Leith and Elliot from Fisherton. The hail smacked down on the ground. I like that word smacked. It's got punch. The wind yes. blues, the lightning cracked. Well done. Now, Lacey from Forest, you've got that. We've talked about this before. When you get was and ing, you can often tighten it up. Noah was munching on a chocolate bar. The wolf was having a meal, a meat-filled bone. So uh, you've used the punctuation correctly, but that was munching. You could tighten it to Noah munched on a chocolate bar. The wolf um, chewed on a meat-filled bone. So you, there was an ing you can often tighten. You can see Jake and Joe just below yours, Lacey. The thunder was crackling. You can say the thunder crackled overhead. The sun hid behind the clouds. So watch out. Jake and Joe for that was in, in business. You can often tighten it, but you've got it absolutely spot on. Uh, there's a couple here I like. Um, Anna from St. Patrick's. James woke with a start. The guards had arrived. That's yes. Nice. And uh, this one I like because it's, it's just mean. Brittany yelled in pain. Bob roared with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Holly and Meredith from St. George's. That's it. Always really horrible to laugh at somebody else's pain. <laughs> There's a lot of very good one. Isla's from TGS. You've got, yeah, well done. Nathan yep. stood proudly clutching a row. You've got, yeah, that's worked well. Alexander, you missed the full stop off, but a lightning storm formed. Alexander. Yeah, people, people are generally being a bit more accurate with their punctuation, which is good. <laughs> Bob woke with a start. The snake was snoring. Riley from <laughs> BPS. I've never heard of a snoring snake. That would be that would be an interesting one. My, my dog, one of my dogs yeah. snores, a terrible snorer. 
but I've never come across a snoring steak. But maybe somebody can um, <clears throat> uh, uh, enlighten me on that one. Rayan from TJS, they're not quite sentences. So Joe eating watermelon isn't, it needs to be like a sentence, Rayan. So it would have to be Joe ate the watermelon, Jones chewed on a lollipop stick. So you've got to turn the two bits either side, really, are sentences, their main clauses. So Maya and Rupert from St. George's, the rain poured, the sun slept. Nice contrast. Yeah, Janavi uh, from MJS. Uh, Emily was getting ready. Her sister was sleeping peacefully. Yeah, that contrast one works very nicely. It does I, I like I like the contrast with with semicolons? I think it's quite a good way of of thinking about a semicolon. If you've got two yeah. sentences, but they're they're obviously closely related, then you can use a semicolon. Yes, yeah, so you get things like I don't know, pie travelled to London, Mel went to Birmingham. Yes, so they're sort of related, but. But contrasting. Like contrast, yes. contrast, yes. Um, so, yeah, Carrie from St. Patrick's. Outside, the guards stood at alert. Inside, Monica hid behind a pile of machinery. Watch, <coughs> watch out for that was thing. So, Janavi from MJS, Emily was getting ready. Her sister was sleeping peacefully. So, you could say her sister slept peacefully. I like Swayze's from Forest. A thick mist curled through the streets. That's that. It's that word curled, isn't it? Mina thought the blindness would never end. I like that. It's a very powerful uh, sentence. So well done. I share an act by um, from uh, Bolton Parish, <clears throat> keeping it really simple. Um, now, I think uh, because of the rest of the, the sentence here, uh, Aisha and Akbar, I would actually lose the, the the the. I would just say wind howled, lightning cracked, rain poured, uh, rather than the wind howled, lightning cracked, rain poured. Um, but it works really well. It doesn't sometimes the really simple short sentences uh, are the best. Um, Jorge, uh, Jorge and Paige, the war, the trees swayed as the leaves fell. James felt cold. Yep, that's good. Um, um, right, we need to come out of the... Um, and Jude, Jude and Luca for St. Patrick's, uh, we won't be seeing you next week as you're blocked. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say that one. <laughs> Deputy Mitchell's team won. John's team lost. So, I mean, you shouldn't have you shouldn't have approved it because um, uh, they forgot the apostrophes, uh, David. So that's that's poor poor um, <laughs> um, moderation there. I'm right. celebrating the correct use of semicolon, John. Are you? Are you good? I am. Good. Right. Um, audio. Yes, we had, a, we had quite a number of audios come in. Uh, shout out to St. Patrick's and Bolton Parish, I think, were the main two this week. But I know we had half term, you know, we've had some schools off half term one week and some off another, so may not got round to that. If you haven't got round to it, do put them on. I will keep checking to approve them. And this week I've chosen one from uh, St. Patrick's. And this one I've chosen today is from year six, and it is Maya. Um, so it's Maya's uh, work that we're going to uh, showcase today. Okay. Me, P, P6, so it's actually year five, I think. So I'll just turn everything up. Yes, it is. Because P7 is year six, yeah. That's right, yeah. So here we and go. This is Maya's story. Or chapter yeah. two, isn't it? Chapter two. Chapter two. Chapter one. Jamal ran and ran, but only found himself in front of a stone wall. The man's silhouette drew closer, flaming eyes filled with greed and anger. He then spotted a rubbish bin and jumped inside. Mm -hmm. 
Chapter Two, Mysterious Creature. Outside, rain poured and clouds rumbled, spreading over the gray sky. Inside, Jamal desperately ran through the rusty building and need for somewhere to hide. Pillars leaned and tilted towards the abyss. To his disbelief, he could just see that there was no way out. He was imprisoned. A few meters away, Jamal could make out the silhouette of the man along with a glinting knife. Jamal lost words, but at that moment, something grumbled deeper and louder than streaks of thunder. Out of the darkness, not one, but two fiery amber eyes rose. A flash of gold sprang, and the sharpest of teeth showed. Whatever this creature was, it was now standing between Jamal and the armed man. It was large, a man-eater, a meat chomper. Jamal realized that he was standing behind a massive lioness. It flipped its head and roared. Within the blink of an eye, the man fled. Jamal stood stunned. The lioness turned and sat down beside him, resting her head on a rock. He could spot that she was badly wounded. A strip of blood ran down her back. He had never been this close to an animal like this. A meaty, tender scent whisked through the air. They stared at one another with emotion in their eyes. His fear and shock began to fade into understanding. Jamal then held out his hand. She gradually leaned her head forward and sniffed, Le then licked his hand with her jaggy, rough tongue. Her eyes twinkled like stars at night, guiding you to destiny. You could see affection, but a hint of sadness. It was then she opened her mouth and spoke, a sweet and gentle voice. I really need your help now, she whispered softly. We need to find the gateway. How amazing that pie. Lovely, isn't it? That was, I, I mean, extraordinarily well, um, uh, well read. Um, and yeah, that was beautiful. I find it quite it moving, so, actually. Yeah, there was so much in there. Um, I, I mean, the way she, she hid what, what the uh, creature was, the way uh, she used Kennings. A man uh, eater, a meat chomper. I noticed that she drew on. <laughs> I can see all little bits that we've we've um, been working on. Being sentence, used. sentence struck some really tight, punchy sentences. Some long sent. I mean, there was everything in there that we've talked about. Pi. It's a yeah, terrific absolutely. piece of writing. And it, yeah, I could imagine it. Um, and I suppose um, the skill is to increasingly make the model your own by. Um, by moving away from the model, but keeping that sort of sequence of events. Yeah, superb piece. And there are a lot of other very, very good ones. As you say, Bolton Parish, Ibrahim, again, coming in nicely. Nicole from Forrest, Caleb, Kira from St. Patrick's. I mean, really extended piece of Riley, uh, Francisco, really extended piece of uh, pieces of writing. So great work, everybody. Well uh, done. Yeah. Well done, Mia. Really, really good. Uh, impressed with that. Very impressed. So that, well, that was great stuff. And it just goes to show that when you when you get the uh, the right motivation and you put the right amount of effort in, that you can have terrific efforts. I, I remember I looked at. I was, I was pleased that Mrs. Burton Gardner, I think I got her name right, <laughs> from Turn Furlong, was posting her Year Four children's writing on on Twitter this week. Pie. Yeah, there were some superb pieces. Uh, I mean, yeah. really good bits of writing. Excellent. Year, of writing. year fours, you know, so we're, we're not talking uh, um, year sixes or, 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 you know, year four. It's it's kind of you, you, a, a lot of year fours writing, uh, story writing ends and the children, uh, the, the adventure finished and they went home for tea still. Yes. <laughs> it, it's what... I think if you told me it was year six writing, I would have believed you. Yes, absolutely. So it was a terrific effort. Thanks for sharing that, Mrs. Burton Gardner. Uh, and well done, uh, year four at Turn Furlong. So on to um, chapter three, Pi. Okay. I'm slightly fearing this because even though I've read it a number of times. <laughs> <laughs> I shall do my best. <laughs> yes. 
chapter three. So if you remember, we'd left our main character, Joe, um, uh, and the wolf inside this old um, sort of shed warehouse thing at the side of the river. Um, and they're hiding there. Joe woke with a start. The wolf slept on. And what, what you'll notice, John, is I've tried to use uh, the sort of semicolons uh, and other things that we've practiced, like varying the openings of the sentences. But the main thing is to try to get a flow of a good story, of course. Joe woke with a start. The wolf slept on. From outside, he could hear loud voices peering through a gap. He could just make out a group of guards trying to break into the warehouse. Do you remember that peering through a gap? Do you remember, John? That was um, that Ashley was, uh, Hardy. Ashley Hardy and Brightstorm, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Now, yeah, now that was really interesting because what, what she was saying was that by restricting the character's view, it makes it easier as a writer to describe the scene because you're, you, you haven't got a huge wide screen, a wide scene in front of you. You've got a very narrow yeah. uh, vision. So I, I, actually, when I got to that bit, I, I, he could hear voices. And I thought, well, he's got to see what's going on. And then I remembered that she gave us that, that tip. Yeah. Peering through a gap. Good. Just make out a group of guards trying to break into the warehouse. Joe nudged the wolf awake. She lay in the darkness and stared up at him with her warm, bright eyes. He put his fingers to his lip, his finger to his lips to indicate that they should be quiet. Sharp voices bark commands. The wolf let out a throaty growl. Joe gasped. Crawling across the dusty floor, Joe beckoned to the wolf. Silently, she padded towards him. Crouching down, they hid behind a pile of old wooden crates. Cautiously, Joe tugged a huge tarpaulin across the crates so that no one could possibly find them. At that moment, somebody entered the warehouse. There was a pause, a sense of someone listening. Torch beams sliced the darkness. Footsteps echoed. The guards began to search. Risking a glance, ebony shadows shifted. Now I can see a capital E for ebony, John, so I don't know how that... I'm going to blame Dave. That was a name, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a typo. <laughs> a sharp, wintry wind seeped through the open door. Shuddering, Joe cuddled into the warmth of the wolf's fur. He could wait this out and would move on once the guards had gone. It seemed like hours, but probably had only been half an hour by the time the guards left. It was night time now, and in the darkness the wolf spoke to Joe without speaking. Their mind seemed almost as one, as she explained that she had reached she had to reach a gateway. A gateway back to her own world where she would not be hunted. Joe had an idea that perhaps the gateway was part of the town walls, where there was a huge stone arch that had once been fitted with a metal gate. Anxiously, he checked her wound. It still bled. She seemed weaker. The town walls would be a long walk and dangerous. He wondered whether they would make it. Joe knew that his family would be worried, but there was nothing he could do about that. He had to find the gateway before he could think about getting home. So it was that only the moon and the stars saw two slim shadows, a boy and a wolf, slip through the alleyways heading across town. They made their way street by street, avoiding checkpoints, locked in a deadly game of cat and mouse. Mm. OK. So you've got to get your character... <laughs> your character's hiding um and there and the uh the enemy are searching and uh you've then got to move the story on to where they're looking for the gateway to gateway to what so that's the question so they're off going across town to try and find the gateway that will mean that the wolf can get back to her world and be safe this magical gateway now of course in the novel john it's it's very very complex in the novel the plot so what i've tried to do is really simplify everything right down of course yes uh, but yeah. i think this is quite a short bit i've done here and i think people could extend and add in more a lot more 
Um, so if you're using my writing as a model, um, you could embellish a lot more. But in essence, they wake up, uh, the guards come in, they've got to hide, they've got to escape from the guards. In my one, they just went away and didn't find them. And then you've got to get them journeying through the city towards um, the gateway. Yes. OK, so you've, you've used a couple of time shifts there. So it seemed like hours, but probably it had only been half an hour. That was yes. uh, sort of to, to show that they've been hiding for a while um, by the time the guards left. And then you've got the uh, made their way street by street, avoiding checkpoints. So you're not so you're just describing the uh, without going from checkpoint to checkpoint dramatically avoiding each one you've just sort of used a bit of a yeah. narrative there just to move the story on yes i i have and you see that could be where it, people extended a bit john in in terms of they could have a, a a little adventure where um they're creeping through the darkness through the streets <laughs> then i don't know a, a, suddenly a, a a voice shouts oi you it's curfew time what are you doing Yes, the, you know, the wolf began to increase pace or whatever, and they got to escape. So um, but they haven't got to the gateway yet. So in the next one, I've got to get them to the gateway. And obviously, there's going to be one final um, exciting bit at the gateway where it's it's blocked or something like that. I'm still so, thinking so about ju judging by the writing so far, we're going to have uh, uh, some excellent finish stories at the end of the four weeks of, of, of creative writing here. So we've got um, chapter three about to happen. Again, please do um, record it and post it as audio as well as, uh, as, uh, as, a, as a blog post. We love to listen to the audios and there's loads on there to, to listen to. David, as usual, will be busy moderating the Jotcast and uh, Padlet so that they're ready and we will see you next time for uh, chapter four um, the final chapter in our um, tiger story so that's all good stuff some terrific writing this week everybody really impressed um, and we'll uh, we'll look forward to it next week bye from me I thought it was some absolutely masterful work in terms of getting those semicolons going. So include a few of those in to show that close relationship between the ideas. So some very good work uh, and lovely stuff um, posted up for us to listen to. So good work. Well done. Yep, so I'll it's certainly, fun for me. I'll, and I'll certainly be looking, Pi, when I'm approving yep. posts for um, people showing off those skills they've been learning. So I'll be looking for those children. So. All the best. Yeah. Yep. Thank well you. Well done, everyone.